Greetings, folks. Joseph Kursky here with you to talk about migration and one of the great resources to teach about migration. Now, why teach about migration? Well, I believe it touches on so many disciplines. Sociology, international relations, political science, economics, geography, and more. So there's compelling reasons for teaching it as it spans disciplinary boundaries. Also, it is a current event and always will be and always has been. It's relevant. It's a global issue that affects our everyday lives. It's also personal. Every one of us has a story about our own migration and that of our relatives and ancestors. Now, there are many good resources to teach about migration, but since it's such a geographic, spatial sort of a concept, to, from, flows, physical and cultural boundaries, identity, and so on, that maps are one of the best resources to teach about migration. And what better resource than dynamic web maps that actually show migration patterns, trends, and issues? One of them is on the Cool Maps Gallery at ESRI, Environmental Systems Research Institute. If I open up that Cool Map, visualizing international migration. Now, there's other maps in the Cool Maps Gallery that I encourage you to look at. These maps change over time, so check back often. But one of these, if I go to this view the map, it defaults to an animation that shows you different years. And so, for example, it starts off with Malaysia. It gives you a little story about different countries and different years. As you can see down here at the bottom, you've got 1990 to 2013 data in there. If I look at that, I can change the years and it changes the country and it gives you information about inbound and outbound in different countries over time. That is the way that the map opens. It's a, as you can see, an interactive 3D map that you can zoom in and out on and you can see flows from between different countries and you might want to say, oh, to Singapore inbound, some of them came from Malaysia. So what if we want to look at Malaysia now in more detail? We can click on Malaysia and get the inbound and the outbound for Malaysia for these different time periods the patterns, but also the thicknesses of the lines have to do with the total flow, inbound or outbound, in or out of that country. Now let's take a look at Australia. Australia, in the current year, 2017 is when I'm making this video, had the highest percentage of foreign-born people living in the country, almost 50%. And so that's causing all kinds of issues in the society, definitely changing the nature of the society. And so as we grapple with these issues, as we deal with them, and as we teach about them, a map like this is a great resource. So where do these folks come from that moved to Australia? So in 1990, we can see migrants to Australia representing about 3% of the total population at 3.8 million. In 2000, it had increased to 4.3 million, still at 3%. If we go up to 2010, 5.9 million, still at 3%. And then in 2013, 6.4 million, but that's still 3% of the population. What about outbound from Australia to other countries? You can see the lines are thinner. There's less of an outbound than an inbound. Is that true everywhere around the, around the globe? Well, before we go there, let's talk about a couple of other things. First of all, where do the data come from? It's important when we work with web maps and any kind of data online to analyze and really investigate where did the data come from? Can I trust it? Is it an authoritative source? And so on. What scale was it collected at? Who collected it? Why did they collect it? What format is it in? How often was it collected? And so on. So here we can see that it came from the Trends in International Migrant Stock, the 2013 revision provided by the UN Department of Economic and Social Affairs. So right away we know that it's from the UN. Does that mean it's perfect? No. But we know that it came from an authoritative body, a research group. And so we can investigate that website that is the UN Department of Economic and Social Affairs Population, Population Division. So you can see the actual data in a table and in an ebook right here on that site. So do some further investigation. Don't just accept these web maps because they're cool and interactive, but really investigate and find out if you can trust the data and analyze and be critical of that data. So if we go to, for example, the United Kingdom, one of the neat things about maps, one of the things I love about teaching with maps is that sometimes it, it confirms our understanding of the world and how it works, and sometimes it sort of sets our understanding on its head. In other words, it maybe conflicts with our predefined notion of what that 
phenomena should be in the world, whether it's migration or natural hazards or energy or water or anything else. So in this case, I see that, okay, the United Kingdom, I've got a lot of inbound. Okay, makes sense. 2% of the population, 3.6 million. But there's also some patterns in here. I would expect India, but, you know, Russia. There's actually quite a bit of inbound from Russia. Why is that? What about outbound from the United Kingdom? So let's look at outbound, and now we've got a thick line running all the way down to Australia. Okay, that makes sense. Outbound to Australia, historical ties. But, of course, as we saw with the Australia um, immigration, uh, it's not all from the United Kingdom. In fact, there's less from the United Kingdom now than there has been in the last hundred years. A lot of the migration to, to Australia now is from China and other places in Asia. So what if we, right now we've got this sort of globe tilted. What if I want to look at it in 2D? I can do that. I can toggle between 2D and 3D. And now I've got a map that is in some ways, uh, it's not better or worse than the 3D, but it's different. And now I can analyze and visualize these things a bit differently. Um, now I can see at one glance that there's a lot of outbound to the U.S. And that makes sense uh, for various uh, historical language and other cultural reasons. We can look at uh, the different countries in the world and we can see that big thick line running down to Australia for the outbound from the U.K. And then the inbound right here. So fascinating, being able to do this for any country. Now I promised we'd come back to the inbound versus outbound being, being largely uh, uh, disparate. So for example, if we go to Somalia, a country that has had lots of political instability, famines, and other things. So the inbound, the immigration, if you knew something about Somalia, and hopefully you would study it in your geography class, that you would see, you would hypothesize that the inbound would be relatively small, and it is. 2013, the inbound was only 2,000, 2,000 people total. What about 1990? There were 460,000. Uh, so something happened between 1990 and 2013 to reduce that number uh, sharply. And so we can investigate those reasons. Now, what about outbound? If we studied the recent history of Somalia, we could hypothesize perhaps that the outbound is going to be a lot more than the inbound because of poor living conditions and political instability. We would hypothesize that the outbound would be more, and we, we see that in the outbound. We've got 1.9 million in 2013. What about in 1990? It was less, so 859,000. Okay, so and what countries did these folks go to? Well, understandably, neighboring countries, Kenya, Ethiopia, but also many places in Europe, even in North America. There are some ties, South America as well. So let's change that to a 2D map so we can get a, a one-shot glance at the migration patterns, and there we have it. Folks, let's take a look now at the United States, thinking about patterns, relationships, and trends, but also the thicknesses or the volume. I'm going to change it to the U.S., and so now I'm going to pan over here. Now the thicknesses of the line, this is outbound right now. Let's just leave it at that. 1.775 million in 1990, 1% of the population rising to 2 million, but still 1% of the population almost 3 million in 2013, and there, here's where they went. And uh, some going to Saudi Arabia, the UK, uh, and elsewhere, some islands out here, some thin lines out there as well. But fascinating. Go ahead and look at inbound now. Remember, the thickness of the line indicates volume. So as you would expect, a lot of immigration to the US, not just from Mexico, but also Chile, uh, look, Brazil, um, some countries in Africa, and interestingly, look at this, Reunion Islands, 122,000 people uh, immigrating uh, in that year, 2013. Interesting. Now, can you tie it to some of the things that are going on in those islands? Climate-induced out-migration, for example. India, other countries showing up prominently here. Let's go ahead and look at it in 3D. So there you have it. We are looking at different patterns, relationships, and trends, and digging into the whys of where. Being able to use these dynamic web maps and compel compelling and investigative, problem-solving, posing good questions and grappling with the data, and understanding the world a little bit better through these dynamic web maps, I think is very powerful to be able to do this in, again, not just geography courses, but political science, sociology, international relations, and others. This is just one of many, many web maps on the cool maps site and there are other web maps out there many of them based on something called arc gis online that you can investigate as well so 
I hope this is of interest. I encourage you to go investigate this map and start analyzing patterns, trends, and relationships because that's what spatial thinking is all about. Thanks. Thanks.